I'm Tass Mellis of The Starters. This is Ben Golver with the Open Floor Podcast. Hi, I'm Kristen Ludlow from NBA Inside Stuff. I'm OG Ananobi of the Toronto Raptors. Hey, I'm Elena Donan, and welcome to the Double Clutch. Double Clutch. Double Clutch. <laughs> Double Clutch. Double Clutch Podcast. straight away hello and welcome to the double clutch podcast i'm mike miller tonight i am joined from right to left by harry lights out harrison boom (laughs) Boom. (laughs) Uh, also joining us is tom hall of fame evening mike are you right i'm very well you yeah good thank you good boom um (laughs) no boom for me sorry (laughs) And it's the DCOG coming out of retirement with a simple fact statement that said, I'm back. It's Matthew Wellington. Hello, gents. How are we all? Very well on this fine Monday evening. Um, boom. <laughs> God, that cheers for that, Harry. Uh, there's Pillow Talk already <laughs> in the uh, the uh, Twitch stream, so we'll get on with that in a minute. But um, thank you, as always, to Kirk for producing this. Captain Kirk in the background there, sat on the back of the g'day, bus. Yeah, g'day. <laughs> uh, Matt's only come on today because he says I never credit him with editing the pod afterwards. So, uh, oh, you figured it out. There the we go. <laughs> um, if you're not already, please make sure you're following us at Double Clutch UK on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We have a Discord server, discord.me slash double clutch, and you can find us on twitch.tv slash double clutch, where if you watch it, you get some magical thing uh, called DC points, and you can buy silly things like I don't know. Tom Hall having to mess his pillows up. So, um, Tom, would you like to mess your pillows up? This has been. <laughs> in a great I've been hiding since, since someone purchased this. I then took a few weeks off because I knew that it was coming. So, I think Kurt's going to full screen me. I'm going to take. going as well um okay so obviously we're here not to just mess around with tom's pillows we're here to talk some nba and with less than a month until the playoff playing begins on the 18th of may this is really the final stretch of the regular season and it's been an incredibly up and down week around the association so let's let's jump around um jamal murray last monday night went down is out indefinitely with a torn acl Uh, Shortly after that, a couple of days later, I think it was Thursday at that point, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge retired absolutely out of the blue due to an irregular heartbeat. Um, Luca and Mark Cuban started kicking off about the playoff play-in. Checks notes, Paul Watson drops 30 points, including 20 and a quarter on the Raptors, uh, for the Raptors. That tells you how much you know about Paul Watson. Um, (laughs) Luca Doncic shot a step through, which has had people calling for a new NBA logo. Zion Williamson gave Knicks fans just that glimmer of hope and got them salivating during his post-game presser yesterday. Steph Curry, player of the week, 43.8 points per game, 5.8 rebounds, 36 three-point field goals, leading the Warriors to a 3-1 and one record. He also smashed a 57-year-old Ste- uh, Steph Wilt record. It's got to be Wilt if it's a record. Uh, becoming the Golden State Warriors' leading all-time scorer. And Julius Randle with 35.8 points per game, 8.3 rebounds per game, 6.5 assists, and a 4-0 week got Eastern uh, Conference Player of the Week. Sorry to clarify, Steph got Western Conference. Um, And led, well, the Knicks are on a six-game win streak, which hasn't happened since basically forever. And then Dwayne Wade became a part owner of the Jazz. It's been an incredibly busy week in the NBA. So I just want to come around and get what your guys' favourite moments are from the week that was. Matt, what was your favourite moment? Um, well, well, mine actually just dates back to as far as last night, um, which was one of the obviously NBA Sunday matchups with the um, Miami Heat and the Brooklyn Nets. And obviously Bab Adebayo taking it all the way inside and hitting the game-winning shot. Conveniently, two days after uh, two days after they lost to the Timberwolves, which was Friday night, when Jimmy Wait. Butler came out and specifically called him soft, mm. <laughs> he he came out and said that Bam was soft and that he, for somebody of his size and his athletic ability, he should just, you know, be more aggressive. And there we go, he was more aggressive last night. So, yeah, there's there's nothing that screams not soft like a face up jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just saying, just saying. He that. still went uh, inside, man. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, what was your favourite moment? Um, 
I Bam the Bam winner was one of mine because I, I did think you know oh that's a that's a cool moment. But I I'll go with the Dontich game winner then because um, that was that was sick. Like and because I think it was JJ Reddick um, said that he he thought it was a two, so he hadn't actually realised that they'd won. But then also said that um, Luca practices those shots kind of shots regularly. And I don't know how you can practice that kind of thing, but apparently in, in practice, Luca practices those sorts of shots. <laughs> oh, Luca takes tons of trick shots. Did you see the one that he shot the other day walking off the court over the top of the, the backboard? With the keepy uppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was ridiculous. But yeah, JJ Reddick thought it was a, a 14 foot floater from the angle he was sat at, and it turned out to be mm. a three. It was, it was a ridiculous, ridiculous shot. Tom, your favorite moment of the week? Yeah, I mean, just to echo you guys, the Bam one was great, but more so because of the lack of interior defence from the net. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, want smoke. you want this smoke. Um, no, but for me, it was the... I mean, what Steph has been doing is incredible. Um, yeah. One of his best displays was against the Celtics, which I obviously watched. I mean, Tatum was, like, also had a really good game, that game as well. Um, I think he had 44, Curry had 47. You just couldn't guard either of them. Um, and so the Celtics winning that obviously put a bit of extra shine on it for me. But just watching Steph, whether it was the Celtics game or all the highlights and the games he's played in the past week, it's just ridiculous. Like averaging over 40 points a game is just ridiculous, that man. Yeah, he, he is incredible. Um, I just know that, you know, I just could pick you up on that little thing you said about the Nets' interior <laughs> defence. They hold Miami, who averaged 44 points per game, at uh, points in the paint, sorry, to 36. So they actually we're better at keeping that team out of the interior. Nah, not when it counts. I will say as well, I've just been picked up in the uh, in the Twitch. I did meet <laughs> a member of the NBA community this week, which was obviously my highlight over Steph. Um, went down to Altrincham, to the market, to go and see Elliot with his stall, hooping and looting, getting another plug in on here. Um, yeah, it was really good to actually put a face to the, the Discord. <laughs> Is Altrincham near you then? So Sorry, it's only about 40 time. minutes from Stoke. Um, and he's probably I think he is one of the, the first NBA UK people that I've actually met face to face so that was nice oh basketball friends <laughs> love it <laughs> yeah love it. Um, okay Let, let's dig into some of the, the wider topics uh, uh, you know some of the the big stories a little bit deeper uh, so LaMarcus Aldridge retiring was obviously a massive piece of news a seven time all star five time all NBA 15 seasons out of the blue there was the Shams tweet saying he's retiring without context He's averaged 19.4 and 8.2 for his career. Uh, and he's had an irregular heartbeat for his entire career, but obviously it, it, it got worse. Um, he was originally diagnosed in 2007. He's had several treatments on it. Uh, and I particularly remember uh, four years ago, we were pod, Matt and I were podding uh, not long after he was basically ruled out indefinitely by the Spurs. And we were like, this is, this is not good at all, you know, Fingers crossed, he he's okay. And then both of us being incredibly shocked when it was only a matter of weeks before he returned to the floor again. It was, it was bizarre. So, I, I want to get your guys' perspective on this. Um, obviously, it's the right thing to do for his health. It kind of, I don't know. We've seen, we've had a few injury scares this year with with not not injuries, more so medical. You know, obviously with Karis Levert's kidney cancer as well. Um, are you guys worried for any players? What, should, what were your guys' thoughts on Lamarcus Aldridge? Um, come to you first, Tom. Well, my question for you, Mike, is did you invest in the top shots before or after Aldridge went out? Uh, what, in his top shots? Yeah, yeah. I, Which obviously I, they are more, not more scarce. Yeah, no, I, um, I haven't invested in any of his top shots, and I probably wouldn't, because I don't see the long-term value. I did pick up one. <laughs> just around the announcement before it spiked, just because I thought this would be nice to have. How uh, callous is that? You picked it up to flip it. No, not to flip it. To actually have, that's what I'm saying. I think oh, down the line, it. he's only going to have those moments now, so that'd be nice. Um, but yeah, obviously, incredible player. I think there's going to be a lot of debate over whether he's a Hall of Famer or not. I think that's going to be the next thing people are going to be hotly discussing about him with like seven time All Star, five time All NBA. Um, Probably would have won championships if he'd not moved to the Spurs slightly too late. He's kind of had one of them weird <laughs> careers where he's been at the, the right teams at the wrong time. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's going to be the next discussion for him. But um, sad for him, sad for the Nets who picked him up on it on the on the cheap. Uh, but yeah, just Pro- got him for him really. Interesting point about probably won championships. Did you see the stat about um, with the Blazers the the 
the uh, the trio of Brandon Roy, uh, Greg Oden, and Lamarcus Aldridge only played sixty two games together, of which they won fifty two. Something stupid yeah. like that, which is obscene. Yeah. Um, Matt, your your take on Lamarcus Aldridge? A phenomenal player, probably the last of dare I say the dinosaurs. Like he was one of those guys who just consistently stuck with his mid range shot throughout his entire career. Um, obviously, he did start shooting the three later on, but he never was. He wasn't one of those players who was going to drastically change how he played in order to, you know, perform on the pit on the on the court. So, and he said, "Pitch then." I've got bloody super league in my head. Um, so, just yeah, a phenomenal career. For him. My my be- best Lamarcus Aldridge memory is probably the 2014 playoffs, where in the first game against Houston in round one, he just exploded, and I think he had like 48 and 15. Like, and he was one of those guys who sort of flirted with the 20 and 10 throughout his NBA career. I think he averaged it twice in uh, for two, two of his sort of later seasons for Portland. He he had that, but he was always flirting with it. And that was sort of a coveted thing amongst NBA big men, certainly in like the 80s and the 90s, less so now. But it, he was one of those guys who, like Tom just said, he was, he was on a team that unfortunately had Greg Oden and Brandon Roy on, which meant he was doomed. And then when he joined the Spurs, Kawhi ended up, you know, injured and then left, didn't he? So... He was in the wrong place at the right, <laughs> wrong time all the time. Yeah, and that 2014 playoff series, the only thing anyone remembers from it is Dame's, Dame's series shot. winner. Yeah. But, but don't forget the work he put in. I think he had put an absolute shift in the previous playoffs as well. They they, um, had, they put Dwight Howard and Omar Rashik on him, like, and they, they double-teamed him for the whole game, and he still got 48 or whatever it was. <laughs> he's Yeah, he was he was an incredible talent. Uh, Harry, your thoughts on him? I'm, I was I was disappointed because like when I when I first got into basketball and I first started playing like back home because I was fairly tall for my age I would be put on like the low like you know the low post kind of thing and I always you know so when I first got got into basketball I I'd like these big men who were great like post scorers could shoot a fade mid range stuff like that and so Lamarcus Aldridge was you know very much the guy that I got quite into at the start when I first started getting into basketball. Um, and of course, he's not quite been as well, maybe impactful, or as as he was um, previously in in his last couple of years. Um, but that's just because the game is changing, and he he, he did his mm. best to adapt. But you know, he just wasn't quite the Lamarcus Aldridge that you know we knew. But that'd have been age as well. So yeah, he is disappointing. I'm disappointed for him, but obviously, it is definitely the right choice for for his health and um, for well his future eventually. <laughs> Yeah, completely agree. Um, I'll go around two questions for all of you. The first one is, uh, I just want a yes, no answer to both of them. Uh, is he a Hall of Famer? And should the Blazers retire his number, Harry? No and yes. Not Hall of Famer, should retire his number. Matt, what have you got? Uh, I'm going to go yes and yes. Yes and yes. Tom? Yes and no. <laughs> I'm going no and no, so we've gone completely no. <laughs> we've covered all bases. Love that. I've that that makes a stuff. change because five years ago when we and you were doing this, we just agreed on everything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Next question. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so moving on, Dwayne Wade is an oh. owner in the Utah Jazz or of the Utah Jazz. Uh, the NBA has a bylaw that ownership stakes can be no less than one percent, but the details of his ownership stake or financial investment have not been. Uh, announced as far as I can tell 15 seasons in Miami Utah seems like an odd choice <laughs> uh, Matt you're chuckling away let's get your thoughts on this one I, I don't think he wanted to tarnish any of that legacy with the Miami Heat like you know he doesn't want to be that guy who makes s- some form of changes in the background and ends up pissing all the, the fans off not that he would have had you know any form of real control but I don't know Utah kind of fits in with the way he's going now and the whole post uh, NBA Dwayne Wade vibe who's you know a sort of social activist and standing up for all kinds of sort of moral causes at the moment and I think Ryan Smith who obviously now owns the Jazz or part owns the Jazz is somebody who's very, who has the same sort of mindset as him so there's obviously a partnership there I read something on SI about they've been going skiing together and that's where like the conversations have come up so because they obviously live in LA and that's where Gabrielle Union lives and they just you know it's an hour away on a flight or a private jet or something so they just hop over to Utah go ski and have a couple of chats with uh you know Ryan Smith and end up buying some or shares or whatever in the jazz it's absolutely bonkers that's uh yeah that is 
that's that's the life you aspire to have, isn't it? I'm just yeah, casually going to fly to another state, <laughs> go skiing, maybe well, watch that club I own a stake in. Just got any form of like you know shares in a team or whatever. I mean, it's just a long list of players that have done this, and now he's he's the next one. Well, that's the that's the thing, Tom. Um, the 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 level of wealth that players are able to collate during their career is fantastic that they're able to then post career get into some element of ownership that that can only be a good thing um how do you see him you know working with utah franchise and uh yeah just just what do you think he can really do there i think it's a great thing and i think we've seen it well obviously it's been the hot topic the past couple of days with football i know much you like talking about football mark um, <laughs> where the, the owners are so detached from the sport and then they propose these things and it's just so far away from what the fans and what the sport needs. Um, so if you're keeping it within the game and you're getting these players involved, uh, even though it's not with his own team, you know, it's, it's so much better because it keeps it organic. It keeps it linked to um, the sport itself. And so I think it's only a good thing. I imagine Utah's a bit cheaper to buy a stake in than Miami. So I imagine yeah, you can buy a little yeah, bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. That's the key question, what you asked, Mike, in terms of is this just going to be? I, I don't imagine it's just a financial investment. He's going to be spending some time there um, with the front office, and so depending on how that looks like, I guess we can judge again how good an investment this is for Utah fans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry, could could you ever imagine spending so long with a single franchise and then not ending up being part of their long term? I mean, we've got to call it long term if he's investing as an owner, but but not being part of their long term. Uh, going forward, sort of part of the franchise, it's it's just it must be an incredible difficult thing to to transition to. We say not as players with any experience at all of the workings of an NBA <laughs> franchise. I mean, you know, I I, I know he he grew up in uh, Charlotte, and I'm talking about Michael Jordan here, but I don't remember people asking as many questions when Michael Jordan bought the Charlotte Hornets. Um, well, he's from Charlotte. You just said he's well. Yeah, he's born in Brooklyn, New York. But like, you know, he, he, spent, he spent so North much Carolina. time. He spent so much time in a, in in um with the with the Bulls. I guess you can say like, oh, why isn't he part own the Bulls? But you know, I kind of get that. But the the owner of the Heat did say that um in a tweet fairly soon after that, you know, oh, I'm really happy for Dwayne. I did offer for him to you know become be part of the ownership group, uh, but he wasn't a fan. Essentially, you know, I'm guessing the offer that the offer that the owner put together said you, you could have this sort of stake for this much, and Dwayne was like, nah, I'm going to get like this much in Utah. I'll go do that. Um, you know, and I, I rate it. You know, I, I did a quick Google uh, today of all the owners in in the NBA, and I think it's good for you know, as Dwayne Wade said, a lot of people from where you know where he grew up doesn't get that sort of opportunity because there are a hell of a lot of white people on the owners board yeah. and um i think it, it, it's it's a really really good thing for him to be able to um uh get onto that you know that powerful position in the nba and, and uh, start making an impact there yeah i thought you, i thought you were going to pop quizzes then on on name the nba owners um no. <laughs> who played with the nba and things like that um yeah I, it, it, it is good uh the mj stuff i guess was partly because he wasn't ever uh, you know, it wasn't the right era for social media. He also was a part owner in the Wizards before he became uh, a player for them. And quite frankly, okay. Jerry Reinsdorf didn't give him the option. He asked to be a common owner of the Bulls, and Reinsdorf sort of poo-pooed it. Um, I wonder if I wonder if Pat Riley sort of involved in this at all because Mickey Arison, obviously, as owner of the Heat, has given so much to, to Pat Riley in terms of control. I wonder if Dwayne Wade, because he's sort of saying no, I want to be hands on in Utah. I wonder if that's something that Pat Riley was like, no, no, this is this is my ship. I will steer it as I see fit. Um it's going to be an interesting one for sure. Uh, we had a question in the chat uh from Mr. Beanie Beans. Uh who would he support <laughs> in a Heat versus Jazz final in the unlikely event that actually no that could happen this year. That's that's absolute yeah good question. Who would he who would he follow? It's gotta be Miami you're... in his heart of hearts. Publicly, yeah. it's Utah. Yeah, yeah. In your heart, it's it's Miami. You're thinking about the finances you get from the, and the exposure your brand gets from winning an NBA championship, like. Well, and also the absolute hauling you'd get if you came yeah, out publicly. That... <laughs> I want the, I want my team, my brand <laughs> to lose. I, I reckon he's uh, he's going to if 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 we did have like a heat jazz final, he'd be dead silent on all socials. He wouldn't be he wouldn't say anything. You know, he wouldn't root for the jazz. He wouldn't root for the heat. And come the end, no matter who wins, it'll be a very 
quite like small acknowledgement as to who and you were like oh congratulations to the jazz or to the heat for winning the nba championship you know great it was a great series and all that kind of stuff i don't think he's got, he's not going to go particularly big for either side because either way he's going to he's going to upset someone so you know i think if if we did have a jazz uh heat final he would be you know sat at home watching on the telly but not doing it not publicly supporting anyone at all well, I, I, I can see why he might do that, but I think he, I don't know. Just the, the, there's like a professional demand to just be like, because you know that he's going to get hammered by everyone going. If this is if this is Jazz Heat, <clears throat> who is your pick? Who's your pick? Who's your, and he'll say the respectful comments, but he's going to say, "I'm a Utah Jazz guy now." That's so weird to say with Dwayne Wade, sort of. Yeah, that's he'll be really wearing weird. a heat jersey when he sat on the sofa. Like, let's not let's yeah. not talk about uh, it. He'll be un- underneath his, his suit <laughs> with, with a little Utah Jazz pin on. Isn't that isn't that what Nick fans do in the garden? They wear multiple jerseys and then they just take it off depending on how the mood is going in the arena that night. That's like a Nick's thing, isn't it? <laughs> Are they jerseys or paper bags? It might be paper bags. I don't know. I've just I've just had a, a weird thought that it may. Do you think? Dwayne sees any similarities between his his NBA career and the way Donovan Mitchell's is going. Yeah, hundred percent. They're really close. That was one of the draws of the the purchase. He actually calls um, Donovan Mitchell two point oh because of the similarities <laughs> in their game. That's a t- true story. So yeah, yeah, he he absolutely does. I um, think it's a plot from LeBron James to to tarnish and sort of knock off the Jazz for the next couple of weeks, so that when the Lakers play in the playoffs, it'll be a bit of a weakened team. Yeah, possibly. It's it's, it's just on that interesting. phone. Just on that phone to his mate Dwayne saying, "Can you just do something to salvage the Jazz, please? Because I'm not confident in our current situation." <laughs> Whilst he's getting treatment for his his sprained ankle, could you walk in and just you know pretend to Mister Miyagi it, but actually just yeah. snap it a little bit? Yeah. Around. Just kick the bin over or something. <laughs> right, uh, which leads us perfectly on to <laughs> on to our next topic, uh, which is going to be um, the injury illusion. Injuries appear to have been rife this season, but is that a misconception? Because the league seems to think so. So I, I, I wanted to get your guys' take on this. Just just for reference for everyone out there, players who left games this weekend or missed games this weekend through injury or resting. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Damian Lillard, Jimmy Butler, Carl Anthony Towns, Donovan Mitchell, Zach Levine, LaMelo Ball, Jamal Murray... Had to take a breath. Jalen Brown, John Wall, Gordon Hayward, Shai Gil... <laughs> never say it. Shai Gil just had a chance. <laughs> Carl Lowry and Pascal Siakam. That's a, a list of, of current and emerging stars that's... It's half like that. 30 seconds? And, yeah, that's like, and they all missed time this weekend. I still got crapped on by Richard, though, didn't I? He's got half his team out. Still crapped on me in fantasy. We'll get to that later. Don't worry about that. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> this is a safe space. We're, there's a special place saved for that. But <laughs> Harry, Harry um, your thoughts on on injuries in the NBA this season? I'm I'm gonna go and say, like, agree with the NBA in that I don't think it's as big of an issue as um, we seem to think. I think this season, of course, um, there's been an additional injury, so to speak. Um, that we wouldn't have seen in previous seasons when players are out because of COVID-19 protocols. And that's been happening a lot, you know. And some of the times we get big names that have to miss time Mm. for these um, COVID-19 protocols. So, you know, there will be players out for that, which will make it seem, you know, oh, there's more people missing time. So, yeah, there are more people missing time, but it's not necessarily injuries. They're fine. They just got COVID. So, you know, they'll be back soon. Um, But... We also have a lot of like big names getting injured this season all at once at the same time. And when you're not seeing your favourite players on the court at the same time and there's none of them on the court in the NBA, it's going to seem like it's a bigger problem because you've not got LeBron James, Anthony Davis. You've not got Kyle Towns at times, Jam- um, Jamal Murray, LaMelo Ball, Gordon Hayward, stuff like that. You know, you've not got them. So it seems like a big problem because they're names we all know and they're not on the court. But I, I don't think it's as big a problem. As, as people think, like, like the NBA have said. Yeah, there are there are some interesting parallels to draw. Obviously, the, the NBA has said uh, that through 50 games, the number of injuries defined as... Uh, so this so some of these ref, uh, quotes are from Baxter Holmes' fantastic article uh, on ESPN. Um, 
basically that through 50 games, the number of injuries defined as those that cause a player to miss at least one game is lower than last season or within the range that the league has seen over the past five years. But conversely, uh, I think it was Henry Abbott put out that of the list I listed before, Butler, AD, LeBron, Murray, Jalen Brown are all on the list of highest for total minutes in the bubble. And then if you looked at highest total minutes per game in the bubble, you had SGA, Kawhi, uh, CJ McCollum and Donovan Mitchell, who have all also missed time. So there must be, I say there must, I'm speculating a little bit, there seems to be a link between the load in the bubble, the shortened off-season, and now the condensed schedule. Um, Tom, is it a myth? I mean, the numbers don't lie. Like you said, I think it's 6% lower this year, the, the amount of injuries than last year. Um, even though they're playing more games a week. I think it, a lot of it is that it's those big names. And I wonder if it's because, obviously, you've got people like Jamal Murray where the injury is horrific and he's not going to be coming back anytime soon. But when you've got people like LeBron and AD and Kevin Durant and people like that, where obviously they're, they're playing it safe just to kind of make sure that they're back for the playoffs. And I think you can probably get away with resting players a bit more doing that longer term this season because of all the COVID stuff. So I wonder where, if this was a normal season and there would, teams would be fine more for resting these guys, if we'd be seeing LeBron and AD and that a bit more. Um, like they're probably not too bad, you know what I mean? I think they're probably just playing really safe so that when it comes to um, push comes to shove in the playoffs, they're all back safe. I reckon in about two or three weeks, we'll probably see them all come back in one big group. Yeah, yeah, potentially. And, and bringing up resting is a great, a great thing to to do here. Um, Flying Tortoise, shout out to Flying Tortoise, long time listener, watcher, viewer. What are we now? Um, <laughs> consumer of content. Uh, pointed out that the Spurs and Raptors were both fined last week for resting players. They both fined 25k for failure to comply with league's policies for governing player rest and injury reporting. Um, so if we look at rest, uh, Per Tim McMahon, the average number of games per week in 1920 was 3.42. That increased to 3.6 in the first half of this season and is now at 3.75, which is ridiculously high in terms of, of games per season. And if you look at teams like the Spurs, who have traditionally rested players, they've gone into the playoffs before with their key players averaging like a 1,000 fewer minutes than some other NBA stars. Matt, we, we've maligned this before when... <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna reference Zebo, but when we used to talk about the Grizzlies <laughs> and, and resting against the Spurs yeah. and the Spurs would rest their star players and you know there's obviously the value of fans buying the product, whether it's in person or online. Um do you think there is a place for rest and it should be more more relaxed? The 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 sort of the way the NBA treats rest at the minute should be more relaxed this season because of the condensed schedule. Yeah, I think they Going forward with the way the game is at the moment and how much pressure these athletes put on themselves every every single night, like they go out there and they give it their all at least for what what are we saying sixty two games. They they're fully their heart is totally in it. it Depending on where they end up in the conference at that stage of the season, so I think you have to factor that in. I think the problem you've got at the moment is it's a no win scenario. Like COVID hit, the teams were midway through a season. They had a break. They came back. They finished late. And then they had to get back on the court again. When was that? December. So we've got 72 games condensed into from December to sort of May now. And it's just, it's far too much sport, like professional sport. I know the, the, the schedule is less, like there's 10 games less than there would be normally. But the, I saw somewhere, like I think it might have been the same article you read about the, um, there's 15% fewer flights. And the NBA is saying that that's one of the reasons they, they think the data is in line with last season. But when you look at the players who are going down, like Donovan Mitchell went down Friday night, I think it was. I think I was watching that. I can't remember what night that was, whether that was Friday or Saturday. He went down and obviously that wasn't as bad as everyone feared it was. But some of the guys in this league who are getting injured are just the ones who are getting older. Like LeBron has gone for so long without getting injured. It's amazing that we've never had him out for a significant period of time until now. So I think it's... Come it on just... now, he tore the groin. People keep dismissing his torn groin from Christmas <laughs> last season, season before. Yeah, Years that happened there. Yeah, they were playing all right until then. Um, yeah. But it's it's all revenue-driven. It's, I mean, the players said, yeah, we're happy to do this because they needed the extra money that the, the league lost from the start of the pandemic. So, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that I think sports leagues around the world are having to deal with at the moment, either condensed schedules and trying to get back to normal for next season. Um, 
I don't think they're necessarily there's a myth around like NBA injuries. It's just been something that's always happened. And you know, Julius Randle bloody snapped his leg opening night of his first game. Like you can't predict these things at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Durant's looked all right, touch wood, since he's been back, even though he's been on and off the court. But and know, went out in the first quarter with a knee contusion, yeah, went out the night. contusion last night. So it's just it's just sport. It's professional sport at the highest level, and it's just something you're going to see. Luckily, yeah. these guys have got the best trainers and you know in ever to help them out, and the technology and everything and the sports science has changed massively from like the '90s and things, where some of these injuries would have potentially ended a guy's career, and now they're you know they can get they can at least try and get back, and if they don't, they you know they give up like Brandon Roy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, can only be one has said, bear in mind that some of these players have injury histories, AD, Levine, KD, etc., which is a fair point. Um, but we're on track. So the 2021 All-Stars, that players who've been named All-Star, we're on track at the minute for 15% of the games this season have, have been missed. That's on pace to be the second highest in NBA history uh, behind the 2014-15 season, which I remember us bemoaning injuries at that point as well. <laughs> Um, but it's a necessary easy, evil, isn't it? If they, if you want to yeah. play these games, you are going to, at some point, be subject to injury. And the likelihood is these are wear and tear injuries that will be sustained by the players carrying the highest load. And I, th- I think this is much, it's a much wider, much deeper conversation than we're probably going to have, or than we are going to have here, because I'm not going to have it here. Um, but <laughs> it's, you know, th- these guys have come into the NBA already having had horrific loads on their, their bodies in the first place, which is why we get so many of these you know, guys who have played AAU circuit ball and everything like that, and they, they're they worn down by the time they already hit the NBA. Um, okay, let's move on. Uh, It'll get worse if there's an expansion. Well, we'll pick up on that saying. in a minute. And we just need man oh, up okay, a bit. Go, well, go on, then. We've had, we've had a, <laughs> what, what did you say, Tom? Just need man up a bit. <laughs> you wouldn't get that in Stoke. You wouldn't get that in Stoke. <laughs> uh, they could move a franchise to Stoke, though. Hey, that would be nice. <laughs> so, so, so what, why do you think they would get more injuries if they expanded that because I think naturally the owners would want more games I think no. the game, I think you'll get more games why would you want you more games you had two, because it's all about the, the pandemic has put the finances of these sports leagues all over the world from the Premier League to the NBA to the NFL They're all the NFL's added an extra game the NBA looking at adding an expansion franchise that says I think you will have to add in more games they're all trying to recuperate this money that they have lost, and I might well, just be a bit up because of what's going on in football. But they, they already have an eighty-two game season. It just means they play some of the other teams slightly less than they previously did. It's a cash grab. They'll they'll just they'll they'll work out a way of getting more games in summer. Well, you had well, two big if, the, the if, if you had Las Vegas and Seattle or something, you're going to want more games because you're going to want more more cash. But you wouldn't. What do you mean? You more games? You you got to get eighty-two games. Why would you need? You, you, why would you need more? <laughs> no, it's just it's, they, they want money. It's money. It's all about money. Sorry. Money. Ah <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Um. Okay. I. On. on <laughs> that's completely throwing me. On that note, Kirk, uh, play that intro for me. Is it going to play? I think that makes silly nonsense. <laughs> okay, so Nick's obviously not here, but he has sent in his question as he always does. Um, after watching my Knicks play the Pelicans with two physical behemoths in Zion and Adams, I began to consider just how much money I would pay, and we're talking significant <laughs> sums here, to see a spin off World's Strongest Man featuring NBA players. If you could launch an NBA spin off of an existing TV show or a major event featuring only NBA players, what are you choosing and why? Who wants to go first on this one? Avant-Gore. Don't all shout at once. I haven't got a clue. I don't know how Nick comes up with this. Nonsense. I've got one. I've got one. <laughs> go. I, I, I'll go first because I actually had one. And, you know, just for the record, before we started, Mike and Matt had <laughs> nothing to this Nick's nonsense. So, Nick, just so you know, I actually prepared for this. I, I thought about this really hard and you know you can all save your you can all save your, your your funny reactions for a second because I know we're all big macho men here but I've gone with RuPaul's Drag Race okay and there's going to be some tape made too hear me out here because think about it the perfect judge would be Dennis Rodman I, I can't think of anybody else that would be 
as as you good. You really as have thought this out. That's an excellent yeah, judge. Right? <laughs> and I also thought, who would be in the NBA currently some fairly good contestants for RuPaul's Drag Race? Mm-hmm. Giannis Antetokounmpo. The lad's got pins. You know, he's got the legs. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the legs. Accentuated even further by heels. Exactly. And he'll wear heels. And, you know, he's, 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 you know, he's a good looking lad. So he'll, he'll get the points. He's full eyes. He does. He has lovely eyes. I didn't realise that was the kind of thing you'd notice. Um... Al Horford, too. Al, Al Horford, if it's the eyes, come on. If it's the eyes, come it's on. Al Horford. But Yanis's eyes are, are endearing. Carl Kuzma. Somebody, somebody just said Kuz in, in the chat. I hadn't thought, that's actually a brilliant one. I hadn't actually thought of that. Carl Kuzma would absolutely rock a, a, drag, a drag outfit, wouldn't he? Let's, let's face it. He'd probably turn up to a gaming one in the near future. But I also thought, because I don't know if any of you three here have watched... Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. It wouldn't surprise me if none of you had. What a surprise. I, I mean, I've heard of it. I understand the concept. <laughs> um, <but. laughs> at the end, when, when RuPaul is like, you know, one of you is going to go home, the last two have to sing for their lives or whatever it is, right? So they have to lip sync to a RuPaul song. And who better, who, who's the best lip syncer? Because we see him lip syncing in the gym and singing all the time, other than LeBron James. He's got the moves. He's got the singing ability. He's done it on his Instagram story as well. Give me RuPaul's Drag Race, NBA edition, and you've got an absolute banger. Thank you very much. (laughs) That is an excellent answer. (laughs) Excellent answer. Um, Yeah, spot on. Fair play. Uh, Tom, did you have an answer? (laughs) I I also did a bit of prep, Nick. Here we go. Uh, Um, Everyone's prepped apart from me. Oh, dear. I've not watched it, but I like the idea of the circle where like NBA players are going to pretend to be different NBA players and like chat to themselves. That would be quite good. Um, I quite like. I've great... not watched it, but <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. Our the Chris Paul would be Baker. phenomenal in that. And um, the main one that I thought would be great would be so you'd have like different NBA teams, like you have teams in The Apprentice, and they've got to go through different tasks throughout the season. And you've got people like Karen Brady and Claude just standing there looking at the front offices, shaking their head, complaining. He, <laughs> you've got Claude like, <laughs> on the Kings team over here, you've, you've passed on Luka Doncic. You've chosen Marvin Bagley instead. For that reason, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> Could be the new NBA draft procedure. That's, how they, that's how they pick up. <laughs> <laughs> they should be the pundits. That, that would be good. Um, I, I misread the question. But I, I managed to pivot just before we went live and find what pivot. I was looking for. So <laughs> I've gone with, uh, I think it's Channel 4's show, The Repair Shop, where people take in things that are battered and broken down. And then these really, like, nice. I don't know what, I don't know what to school. These, these craftsmen uh, rebuild them. And I would want the NBA players with the biggest hands to do <laughs> these really dexterous, like, fine things just to see what happens. So you can imagine, like, Boban trying to sew up a, a like an antique teddy bear or something and just like stabbing himself with a pen or you know uh trying to pin a leather chair that sort of thing um that's what i'd do which clearly you know was a last minute pivot as well <laughs> Matt, you didn't have anything. i didn't have anything um, i'm now thinking i would like an nba scrap heap challenge based on a conversation we had just before we came on <laughs> where you could have at the end of free all, agency yeah you could you could put all these players together you know let's see who's got the best teamwork off the court as opposed to on it and see what they can come up with and it has to be like nba related so they maybe it's like a robot anthony davis that they have to make out of scrap or something how soon before it becomes a thunderdome and you see what it's <laughs> <gone? laughs> mad max <laughs> um what, what, we had some good shouts in the chat yeah yeah, we had some good shouts in the chat. Thumb Wars, that'd be good. Uh, I didn't realise that was a TV show. Is that a TV show? Um, uh, Thumb Wars. NBA MasterChef. I like uh, Ser- Serge Ibaka's not winning that. Sorry. <laughs> Serge <Ibaka>. um, <laughs> Robot Wars. NBA Gogglebox. Oh, can we Chelsea. get Jonathan Pierce commentating on an NBA game? That'd be unreal. Yeah, that'd be funny. Hang on, who's who's Jonathan Pierce? <laughs> what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Mike, where have you been? <laughs> He's the guy that commentates on Robot Wars and some football matches. As well. Okay, fair enough. Wasn't that like uh, the guy from Red Dwarf? This is a weird tangent. Let's not go down there. He was the host. Yeah, move on. He was the host. Right, fair enough. I didn't it's watch that. That's, that's a great shout, Ross. Robot Wars was my childhood, I'll have you know. That was, that was a banging show. I used to watch that every morning before. I thought you were 12. Huh? <laughs> oh, never mind. Sorry. Don't say that, Harry. Um, Don't say that. 
Re- real house <laughs> husbands of the NBA and Keshi's Castle. Keshi's Castle would be would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> okay, that was a, a bit of relative madness. Um, talking on D discourse on Discord. Uh, if you're not already, come join our Discord community. Discord.me slash double clutch. Uh, a few chats on there today. Uh, well, today in the last week, uh, one one very polite and slow burning debate has been uh, around. Ben Simmons versus Kyrie Irving. Uh, so I just really wanted to get your guys, uh, you can do it one word, takes on who you'd rather have, Ben Simmons or Kyrie Irving. Harry, Ben or Kyrie? Ben. Oh. Matt. Come on. <laughs> uh, if I'm building a franchise from scratch, I'm taking Ben Simmons. So one word, Ben, you've gone. So we've had Ben, Ben, Tom. Ben. Ben. <laughs> um, and making it a clean sweep where we were really <laughs> wow. um, also going this is Ben. It's not going to go down well. No. Uh, which... Ben Simmons can play defense. <laughs> well, yeah, th- there is that. But <laughs> and I, I, I like I like somebody who can play. I, I feel like you've got to be if you're going to choose somebody in a debate like that, you've got to pick, just like, pick the person who's going to have the biggest impact on both ends, and that will be Ben Simmons. There we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, apologies to any Nets fans out there. Um, and we are we will continue our polite conversations in the Discord. Uh, come and join it. What, <laughs> see what we get up to and chat hoops with us all the time. Um, we've also had week one of our fantasy league playoffs complete, and uh, there were some upsets. Um, there were some non-upsets as well. So, Harry, <laughs> you, you were absolutely shellacked. 11 1. I don't think I've seen such a one sided beat <laughs> uh, in round well. one. That was 10 1. God, that's even worse uh, than I thought. I'm getting 11 1 given. Look, <laughs> let's, let's put um, it this way. We all know that realistically, like, you know, I lost the first battle, but we will all win the war, as I think what we were saying in, <laughs> in Discord, because Richard cheated. Um, like, we're, we're just, we're, let's just put it out there. He's, he, he's, he's just. But like you know, he's just stolen all the good players, and um, that's yeah, you say you throw around words cheated and stole. People <laughs> consensually gave their players to him. He, they were him. coerced. You guys are full <laughs> rude. The amount of trades I saw happen, I was just like, yeah, no, this is why I don't play this league. Um, there were also some upsets. Uh, t- the ten seed beat the seven seed. The nine seed beat the eight seed, and Kirk. Oh, Kirk. Absolutely next. destroyed by Nick. In okay, the biggest next, uh, up by far. Kirk, the second seed, smashed out by the fifteenth seed. Six five. It was close. Kirk, do you want to do you want to say anything other than next on that? No, nothing. I, I, <laughs> I spoke. object to everything. <laughs> oh my word! He actually spoke. <laughs> Does it hurt that much? Yeah, it hurts oh, that much. So, so, so next. Next. <laughs> An in-person next. Okay. So that's a world first for podcast listeners, that. Yeah, amazing. Uh the lesser spotted Kirk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listener questions. We had some good listener questions in this week. First one from Rich Fang. Uh where would you rank Jokic in the greatest offense offensive centers ever, Tom? I, I haven't put a number on it. Do I need to put a number on it? <laughs> I've you put can't up do. there. Up, up there. Any, <laughs> I would, mm. Okay. Has anyone put a number on it? Or would you, you know, top five, top 10, top 15, top one? Top 10. Top Possibly. 10? Top six. Top six. Oh, that's quite specific. <laughs> Are we See, calling Tim Duncan a, a centre or a power forward? Call him what you want. Power forward. <laughs> Oh, forward, okay, taking them out. See, for for this question, I wanted. I was thinking, like, you know, how are we describing the best offensive centre? Because, like, you know, what I mean, I'm not ready to put jo- Jokic in the conversation with like Shaq and people. Like, I'm not ready to do that yet. But if we're talking like in terms of all round offensive skill, he's got to be up there because no big man has passed the ball like Jokic has before and has influenced the game in like. Go and watch Arvidas Sabonis. He passed the ball like you. <laughs> and he yeah, was past his peak when he, he came he, into the did league. He, did, he, did he average like 8.8 in a season though? No. 8.8 8. 8 assists. Because they didn't give the, the ball to the centre at that point apart from for... <laughs> okay. No, that, that's, that, that's, that's fair. But 
in terms of like his all round like ability to do lots of different things on 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 the offensive end, he's got to be up there. But as I said, mm-hmm. I'm just not ready to put him in in the conversation with all time great like bona fide Hall of Fame centers yet. Yeah, we actually share a very similar opinion here in terms of in terms of well rounded and versatile offense. He is right up there as as being um, a. a a trailblazer, if you will, uh, you know, in terms of what he can do. But Shaq, Wilt, Hakeem, David Robinson. David Robinson dropped 71 and people just forget about him. Um, Hakeem Olajuwon, I'm not ready to put him quite in that sphere of, of all-time greatness. Um, Matt, did I ask you? Yeah, you said top 10, didn't you? Yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> out of curiosity, I've just found a top 10 from Bleach Report, which we could just use as a basis for our... Um... Background of debate at number ten. I'll just say they've got Dwight Howard. So, offense not thinking, overall. This isn't just offense. This, yeah, this is overall. It's obviously not offense because that guy couldn't do anything outside. Yeah, this is foot. this is an overall uh, overall centers list that they've got okay. on Bleach Report. Yeah, okay. So he's not out, he's of, not out of fifty. Offense. So I've skipped a load of players. Bear this in mind. So they've got Dwight at ten. So we're all putting Jokic above that, I guess. Well, offensively, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got Wes Dwight, Dwight with stuff. Jokic in, in like a who can play a better defense contest, yeah, and who can run faster, and who can get, need, <laughs> and who can get needless fouls and thrown from games quicker. Yeah, <laughs> God, are you going to roll through the rest of the nine or? Yeah, do you want me to? Play? Yeah, so I just roll through. Uh, you, uh, Wes, un, Wes Unseld at number nine. Yep, uh, fantastic eight, undersized eight, guy. Eight is Patrick Ewing. Uh, seven's Moses Malone. Six is Hakeem. Let's stop there. He's definitely better offensively <laughs> than Wes Unseld was. Uh, Patrick Ewing was ahead of his time, could hit that 18-foot jump shot, but I would still say Jokic, all-round offense better. And who was it before? Oh, it was Moses Malone. Yeah, okay, he's better yeah. than Moses Malone, who got amazing stats, but mainly that's because he grabbed his own misses. Um, and you got Hakeem. <laughs> so this is where it gets dicey. The top six, yeah. we've got Hakeem. Sounds like Russell Westbrook. Um I just genuinely, I didn't realize how good Patrick Ewing was until I discovered Pick and Roll's YouTube channel and went back and looked at all like the vintage games they've got from the nineties. So um, he's underrated. He really is. That's Pick and Roll for that one. Um, David Robinson's five. Uh, Shaq's four. Three is Will. Ooh. Two is Bill Russell, and one is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. So offensively, oh, yeah. obviously, Bill Russell system. drops out of that list. Um. So yeah, I, we weren't far off. The, the names we listed. That's good. Um, okay, Chi asked, uh, given the talk about the European Super League, what do we think about the possibility of league expansion? I'm not sure the two marry up very well. I don't, no. know, I don't know if they do. Um, Matt, you, you and I had a, a very random conversation earlier about the Super League, um, <laughs> which was me just going, why? Like, what's the problem? What's it the, was you why? being, I don't like football, so I'm, I don't care really what happens to the football. <laughs> it's great. It's not for the fans. That betraying us yeah but you, you're still suffering from the the delusion that it's the fans that count they don't care about the fan they care about the coin it always has been okay i'm a peter united fan but they are, in, they, are in that, <laughs> they are they are in that rare percentage of clubs that are, have that ability in football whereas you look at all of the national leagues and the leagues below it the championship and all the all the leagues across europe like most of the football teams don't have that luxury of being able to just say, look, Sodja, we're going to join our own thing. And it's bankrolled by Americans who obviously, they don't believe in relegation. They don't believe in draws. It's all about competitiveness. And they want to put, they just want to move. They want to have this separate. So the essence like, of sport, competitiveness. Well, it's not because you can't get relegated. Or, but then again, I'm an NBA fan, so I don't. Really, I can't really say that kind of. Um, I don't. But, I, again, this probably isn't the forum to have this. This no, debate, we'll be I don't see what the problem is. It's like you basically said, lots of companies because they are companies ha- are upset that they won't be propped up by bigger companies anymore. Yeah, it's J- JP Morgan are like bankrolling the whole thing, and I think they 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 have seen the NFL and the NBA and the NHL. Is that a thing still? Um, yeah, and they've seen a. a uh, you know, a lucrative opportunity to make super amounts of money from English football clubs and from German football, uh, well, Italian football clubs and Spanish football clubs. So I, I can see disgust in Tom's face. Uh, Hooping and looting is calling me out on the uh, on the on the 
Well, I, I, might be. I, I, I know they're not leaving domestic leagues, but it will destroy domestic leagues. That's the point, because you then have no point of a top six in any of these European leagues. The money doesn't trickle down. The money doesn't trickle down now. So why is it going to trickle down when they're in their own league? So if it like, doesn't trickle down, what's the what's the issue? But anyway, this is not what we're supposed to be talking about. <laughs> Tom, did you have a comment before we get it back on track? <laughs> Just before, before we move back onto basketball, the only people that want this to happen are like, the owners of these, however many teams that are going to go into it, none of the fans, not even the teams themselves, or the leagues, or FIFA, or the UEFA, or anybody wants it. Um, it's I can't think of a single reason, other than for the money for these teams, as to why you'd want it to happen. It's just ridiculous. But I wouldn't mind expansion. There we go. Okay, so expansion then. <laughs> uh, do, do we think the league expands then? Matt's obviously said his piece on he thinks that it could, it could create uh, more issues in the future because it would... I disagree that it would lead to more games, but Matt thinks it would lead to more games. Um, are people pro expansion? Yeah, we've got to get a team back in Seattle somehow. I don't care how they do it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely need a team back in Seattle. Uh, I, I'm happy for them to expand. I did think Mexico City would be another draw, but I don't know how well that will go down with people having to live uh, outside of the US in a non, well, I say non English, where English isn't the native tongue. Um, so I, I don't know. Vegas is obviously an option, but I know I like Vegas. They, they. What they about mean? another Canadian franchise? You know, have try the Vancouver experiment again. <laughs> yeah, I think, isn't that the problem? They tried that once, and no one noticed. Well, yeah, but now the Raptors have like, like you've got you know, basketball's changed a lot. In when when did the Grizzlies move? That was twenty twenty two years ago, or something, wasn't it? A long while ago. A while back. Was it before yeah. the turn of the century? Talking this far back. I, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> they only arrived in 95, 96 season. So they they must have made it to like 02 or something like that. Let's find out, shall we? Yeah, go for it. So Tom, your pro expansion, any particular cities you'd like to see get a franchise? I mean, yeah, Seattle is a definite. I think having said I'm so pro it, I love it. My knowledge of expansion is mainly from starting up new teams on 2K <laughs> and just really enjoying <laughs> being able to pick from like, the free agent pool and stuff like that. So, um, I, the problem becomes like where you stop. So if you go to 32, fine. What if then a few years down the line, does it just keep going and keep going and keep going? And if you go to Mexico, do you then have an argument for London? And I mean, it could just keep going. And for a lot more detail, you can, I think Justin <laughs> Quinn has written extensively on Double Watch yes, about yeah. different, different yeah. Um, expansion teams. But it's just where do you draw the line? Like, I think 32 I'd be okay with. If you keep going, it then does it just take the mick a bit? Yeah, if you want to read more about expansion, uh, go to dubclutch.uk and search expansion and you'll find about 13 articles by Dr. Justin Quinn about expansion and the possibilities of it, including one that was a couple of months ago, I think. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a, an opportunity to increase and expand the league further. I'm, I'm never... I'm I'm out on there being a London franchise. It's never going to happen until we have some kind of uh, time loop way of travel. <laughs> um, okay, another question. Yeah, bring from back Sheet. Concord. <laughs> I think I said that before. Bring back Concord, and now we're talking. I mean, this someone is, is working on it. Someone is working on a new version of Concord. Um, 2001, the Vancouver Grizzlies left. What did I say? Oh, two. Oh, I was close. So close. Like that. And yet so far, um, is New York now an attractive free agent destination? No, this is based entirely on what Zion said last night. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not convinced. Hey, they've shown competence this season. <laughs> yeah, but next season will they do the same? Like, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, but the question is: Is New, New York, York now or New York an attractive New York center, including Brooklyn? Yeah, so we're not going for the we go for the city of New York, or rather, <laughs> or the borough of New York, rather than the borough. Isn't it? It's, no, New York's the city. So yeah. New York State, New York City. But yeah, we're talking we're talking Knicks, not Brooklyn, who have been uh, a free agent destination for at least two seasons. In which case, no. no. I think you've got you've got to have more than like Julius Randle having a good season to become like a good like a free agent destination. Like I, I know it's New York and it's like the you know the bright lights of New York and everything, and but like it's just not. You, they need to draft someone good. That person good makes the team look good. And then people want to play with this young person who's good. And then people want to sign with the Knicks so they can play with this person who looks good and get New York a championship. Before that, you're, I don't you're like only gonna, <laughs> The odds of getting someone good are only increased if you're crap. Yeah. 
Precisely. So you'd have to. You'd have to. You're saying that the Knicks would have to get worse than they've already been for best part of a decade in order to get better. Whereas they've turned what was a terrible team last season of bit pieces into a competent team pushing for a playoff spot under a head coach who is known for. Yeah, he's not, he's, he's had a bad rep before for for wearing players out, but he's known for getting the most out of a team. I don't yep. think that's a bad thing. I don't think they're, it makes. They're changing the culture of the team. That's what they have to do. They brought in tips to change the culture of the team. It's obviously affected the players. If you show these free agents that the Knicks aren't a total shit show, and that players can actually, you know, fit in and and thrive in the system like Randall's doing. Derek Rose is playing really well at the moment. Like, you, you know, they they they're there. They are the largest market in the NBA. Like, if you can turn them around, do it. If what are they, thirty one and twenty seven or something this year? Like. They're going to make the playoffs with any luck. And once that team gets back in there, the vibes will start going. Hopefully, Julius Randle doesn't punch a fire hydrant um, circa Imari Stoudemire the last time they were in the playoffs. Um, but I think it's the cult- they're, they're trying to change the culture. I mean, we've all listened to the um, athletics pod on the Knicks. Like, it, as long as James Dolan's there, there's people are going to have problems with them. But if yeah, they can turn I it around on the court, that. and if the coach is in place and it's working on the court, then surely it's a more attractive environment than whatever it was before before now. Because we've covered the Knicks as, well, well 2012. Like Every year we talk about the Knicks, and they've been bad, basically. Like The first year we did this pod, they were in the playoffs, and that was it. We, they were just irrelevant cannon fodder for the rest of the Eastern Conference. Tom, no, yeah, notoriously think... a sympathetic or a Knicks sympathiser. <laughs> um, <laughs> not quite. Um I, I don't think it will be next season. I think it's funny we all slag them. Well, we kind of slag them off, but praise them in a weird way at the start of the year because they didn't do anything stupid, and it looked like they've not signed any mad free agents. <laughs> they looked like they were actually planning on tanking, which would have been okay if they'd have done it intentionally. Um, but then it's ended up working out quite well for them because they've got these young guys who they've been able to invest in, as well as I don't even think you, Mike, would have expected where they've been so far. This season, like in a playoff spot, uh, I think you two have done at least four shows where you were just complete shock and awe at the state of the Knicks and the fact that every week you did the next pod, they were still it's doing mad. okay. And, and still, it became, it, it became the opposite <laughs> of what it did for the last like eight years, where it's been, oh my god, the Knicks are terrible. Yeah. To oh my god, the Knicks are actually competent, which makes a change. But as a Julius Randall stan, I'm all here for it. But yeah, I think more so because they didn't like go out and sign anyone big, and it's just happened organically with the guys that they've got. So I think they've gone about it the right way. It seems now that Leon Rose has got a bit more in terms of influence, that they're going in the right direction. So I think it's not as um, grim as it looked a year or two ago. And I reckon maybe in an off-season or two time, there might be more guys willing to go there. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll accept that. Um, Matt Hardy, who's the worst, most clickbaity analyst out there? And why is it Kendrick Perkins? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of the analysis air quotes uh, this season has been has been terrible. I've been trying to think for weeks of a name for this type, and all I can think of like is that it's a caricature of analysis. It's just I don't know how to describe it any other way. It's just a caricature, and, and it gets the obviously it's clickbait because it gets the clicks and it gets the likes yeah. and it gets the views and it gets the conversation flowing. But there's like a there's like a starting five really, isn't there? There's obviously Kendrick Perkins. Um, you got who? Who did you Shannon guys have? Sharp. Shannon, Shannon Sharp. Sharp. Yep. He he can go. So we've got centre and power forward sorted. Like the um, ball. Yep. <laughs> so we've got we've got Skip Bayless. Skip Where do you want Bayless, to play him? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, is he can, we play him at, can we play him at centre so that everyone dunks on him? <laughs> no, that's where Perk's got to play. Uh, no, play Perk at point. Stuff it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just not? throw it up in the air. Um, and then obviously you've got Stephen A. Yeah. Uh, and who's the who's the guy? Nick. Nick Wright. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Any who's others? The box, who's the boxing any? guy who does the first take? Oh, what, the one. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. He's not as bad. I think when he's on who's his own, this? he's actually all right. Max Kellerman. Yeah, I think Stephen A. just oh, gets the most right, out of yeah. <laughs> Mike's face said it all. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I know the name. Previously. A Knicks fan, admittedly, um, accused us of, of trying to be with our Knicks takes. They were like, "Oh, you, you try to be 
first take in Max Kellerman. Really? Moment. I was just like, are you kidding me? I don't even watch that. There's no way I'm watching that. How dare you associate Can't that? Can't be hyperbolic about the Knicks. They do it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we did have another question, uh, which ironically, I committed a bit of a faux pas on and forgot to include it in the list of questions, but we'll see if we can hit it anyway. Um, so from Hooping and Lutin, Having caught Captain Kirk editing his messages in the Discord to try and hide his embarrassing mistakes, <laughs> what player's monumental faux pas would you want? Uh, would you rate highest in wanting to erase from memory? Uh, so, on the fly, that's difficult. But uh, immediately, <laughs> J.R. Smith, game one of the finals. Oh yeah, that was bad. Offensive rebound. Uh, I would want to erase that. Um, Chris Webber's calling a timeout during the final four in, what would have that been, 94? When you didn't have a timeout, so they got a technical and lost the game to North Carolina. Um, have I stalled long enough for any of you to think of a <laughs> monumental faux pas? You, you stalled long Google enough it. for me to Google faux pas, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, any more you'd like to add on in there? Are we doing like in-game mistakes, not in terms of like... Well, Going whatever. The... If a monumental faux pas it can be on court, off court, whatever. I mean, not taking Doncic in top three is unbelievable yeah. for me. Everyone yeah. knew he was like the player was going to be. Um, so that's that's top for me at the moment. Why are you waving that? Because I've got a really good one relating to the to Lamarcus Aldridge. The, the, oh, right. the, okay. ra- the Raptors, the Raptors taking Andre Bargnani over Lamarcus Aldridge because <laughs> they could have paired him with Chris Bosh. That is a stupid decision. Yes. Agreed. Well, if we're going to go that far back, Sambui over MJ. Let's let's. Well, there you go. Do we, so we could we could we could redo a lot of drafts. I've got to admit, though, in recent memory, Doncic <laughs> yeah. dropping to third. Yeah, it was just ridiculous. And then Atlanta trading him. It's mad. The Hawks, the Hawks are happy though, right? They get a highlight reel on TikTok. Yeah, with, I mean they're um, they're happy. But even like, trade like I get. Do you, do you think? Uh, getting sidetracked here, and we're running long. But do you think actually um, DeAndre Ayton at one was a massive faux pas? Not the yet. whole thing, everybody knew who Doncic was what, was going to be. It was really clear from what he'd done in the EuroLeague, all of the scouting and stuff that people were talking about before. Everyone knew he was going to be this guy. And there were like the odd rumours that, oh, he doesn't want to play in Sacramento or Phoenix. But even so, when he's this good... <laughs> You, you can't take Marvin Bagley above him, and now he's not even playing for it. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. Um, okay, let's move on. Games of the week. Uh, Harry, who have you got for game of the week? I had um, either Charlotte at Chicago or Chicago at Charlotte. I can't remember which way around it is. That's <laughs> on ooh, Thursday, I think. Thursday at 2 a.m. On Friday morning. Friday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Friday morning, there you go. Um, because they're vying for the last, well, the playing spots, aren't they, in, in the East? The Hornets are still falling um, with their injury ridden squad, and the Bulls are obviously trying to get into a more favourable playing position. I thought that would be an interesting one if you're not too fussed about what's happening at the top of each conference. That's, a, that's an interesting one to look at. Yeah, that's not a bad chat, actually. Uh, Matt, who have you got? I've got Sixers Bucks, which I believe will be the Sky game. I'm not entirely sure. It's half eight, so I assume it would be. Um, it's half eight Saturday. Uh, just two of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. I think the Bucks could still, in theory, catch the Sixers, but they need the Sixers to slip up a lot. So beating them would be a start. Yeah, yeah, it certainly would. That's a big, big, big game. Uh, Tom? Yeah, I was going to go that one. So I instead went for Memphis playing Portland on Sunday. One, because it's the nine o'clock game on Sky, so it's a good one to watch. Um, and also, just because it's two teams that are jostling for position towards yeah. the bottom of the that playing race in the West, so that'll be an interesting one. Yep, yeah, yeah, it will. Uh, I've gone for Sunday game, uh, eight thirty tip off, Phoenix at Brooklyn. Uh, should be a should be a bit of a shootout between two of the best teams in the league. Um, let's have a quick look. See if we missed anything else. Just going to hit a couple more things. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you follow us on all social media platforms. So that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And thanks to Captain Kirk. Do you want to fire up a bit of video, buddy? We're going to go live right now and do our first... We're not going to do our first TikTok. He's going to <laughs> share our first TikTok. Look, there's Kirk. I can see him. <laughs> there we 
goes through and throw for those who are listening on audio form uh kirk just threw a TikTok up on the the twitch screen um which we can't seem to see actually on the twitch stream it seems to be hanging I, down at a different angle it's like hanging off the screen yeah <laughs> so you know what to do be lovely people go over there follow us at doubleclutch.uk go check out the website doubleclutch.uk um giveaway there's been a followers. really good pod came out uh friday did it come out which was hugh interviewing neil myers that which is the vp of nba yeah, europe you also got dino raja who's a FIBA hall of famer former boston celtic uh incredible player with a former uh former Yugoslavian Republic. I don't even know how to say it. And then with later on with Croatia, uh, finalist in the 1992 Olympics. Um, new followers this week. We head on Discord, Alexi Y, Petty Claret, Jojo O2. So shout out to you guys. Uh, we had a follow on Twitch from SJ19. Don't forget you can subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. Thank you to Kirk, as always, for uh, making things r- run on the, the Twitch channel. And a shout out to Matt, because he wants one uh, <laughs> for, for editing this afterwards. Um, you guys have been lovely. We will see you again next week. Toodaloo. See you later. Here we go. Are we still live? Ross McLeod is too old for TikTok. <laughs>